Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozori, Evinrood, and the Star Island Yacht Club Shark Tournament. Hi there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast for New England. Well, let's see, you're gonna, as you're going to see, this week's video has a good mix of information in it, in no small part to the uh, ever-increasing success being seen on a variety of species in southern New England. We also got a great how-to video from a fisherman subscriber this week, demonstrating a little trick that he uses when tying dropper loops for his fluke rigs. So be sure to stick it out through the entire video. All right, here we go. First up, there was a large shot of big striped bass landed in New England, uh, southern New England, over the last week or so. Um, a couple of those fish were even caught close enough to shore for a surf guy to have had a chance at landing them. But unfortunately for us surf guys, they were all boat fish. Let's see, Long Island Sound saw at least three, but perhaps as many as five, 50 pound fish caught last week. Rhode Island had another 50 landed in the upper bay. And last but not least, a 53 pound bass was caught up in the Boston Harbor area. South side of Long Island also saw some much bigger fish this week with a 58 and a 60 weighed in. Both caught off boats off of uh, Fire Island as well as a bunch of other fish in the low 40s to 50 pounds. Uh, those were caught in and around the bunker schools. And honestly, with the new moon this week, I am not terribly surprised at these catches being made. And I send out a big congrats to all the anglers. Uh, speaking of striped bass, I talked to Chris Bishop, a good friend of ours here at the Fisherman Magazine. He, he works for Yozuri. He was up in New England this week shooting some promo videos, and he reports some excellent action on striped bass had in the canal. He got in a bass to the low 40-inch class with the large Yozuri Hydro LC Minnow in the mackerel pattern, doing the majority of the damage for him. There's a variety of bait being seen in the canal right now, including... Uh, Let's see, herring, pogies, sand eels, and of course, mackerel. And one little trick, when Tinker Macs are on the menu, there's a bunch of lures by Yozuri, including the Surface Cruiser, the High Speed Vibe, that LC Hydro LC Minnow, and the Mag Darter that all come in a sick mackerel pattern that are just about as close as you can get to the real thing in artificial form. So give them a look. Let's see, moving on, over in the East Bay, TJ Kopecki checked in via email this week for his report. Couldn't quite get a video together for us. No problem. We still like having the report. And he said that uh, pogies are attracting more and larger striped bass in the Lees and Coles Rivers right now. And then also fish to the 30-pound class are being landed up in Mount Hope Bay, upper Narragansett Bay, and even up into the Providence River. Again, attracted by schools of pogies. He also noted that bottom fishing is getting much better around Colt State Park in Bristol. He got that from his buddies over at Lucky Bait and Tackle. And he went out for uh, a little bottom fishing of his own, hit the area out in front of the Saconic River for some really big scup and some catch and release black sea bass. Got to keep in mind, black sea bass season opens in Rhode Island on June 24th. So we'll have to wait a few more weeks until those tasty sea bass can make into our coolers in Rhode Island waters. But speaking of black sea bass, the season is open down in Connecticut. And I heard from a buddy of mine, fisherman subscriber Chris Jensen this week. He said he and his wife, Michaela, have been slamming sea bass in Long Island Sound. And I got word of the fishing off of Clinton being just about as good as it could possibly get right now with lots of large dream boat caliber fish being caught around Six Mile Reef. Word is that there's been a fleet of boats on them most days, so finding the action should not be too hard if you want to join in on the fun this weekend. I also heard of a few keeper fluke being caught mixed in with those black sea bass, but unfortunately, unfortunately for the fluke guys, most of the fishermen are reporting a tough time getting down through all those sea bass to the fluke. Due to this, the better action on fluke right now is primarily between uh, Block Island and Montauk and somewhat over to the south side of Fisher's Island. Heard from our friends at a w Marina in New London. They weighed in a 10.85 pound fluke for Fisherman Magazine subscriber Mark Touchette last week. 
Now this fish lands Mark on the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge leaderboard, but it's worth noting that we've gotten a load of good entries coming in on a bunch of different species almost by the hour this week. And just in the time that it took me to prepare this week's video notes for you, we had two fish larger than Mark's hit the leaderboard. So what I was originally gonna reference to his place got knocked down two spots, but uh, nonetheless, there's a lot of action going on right now. And who knows how this leaderboard's gonna look by the time you watch this video. That said, there is still plenty of time to get in on the Dreamboat leaderboard for your shot at the grand prize, which is a brand new Styrocraft boat. Be sure to visit thefisherman.com for complete and official rules. And if you're looking for some tips on tying that perfect doormat fluke rig, I got a special video this week from Fisherman Magazine subscriber, John Antolini, as he shows you how he ties a dropper loop. A couple people asked me how do I tie the dropper loop for my fluke stuff. So I take the trilene 40 pound big game, take like three feet, And what I do is I take it, put both the ends together, and then pinch it up like this. I always crunch it. So now you got that. You just take that two ends, start twisting it. Keep twisting it. And I pull it like this to make it a little more stiff. Do that a few times. Until it's about that long. And you take the two ends, just cross them over each other. So you form a loop. Then you just take this end, pinching it in the middle, twist it one two, three, four, then you got that. So now you take this end, pass it through that loop again, one, two, Three. You do about three on that side. So then you have that. And I take it right here in the center, and you got to open one of those loops. Like that. Take this end, push it through. you go then you just put your teaser up here or a little bucktail and you tie your bucktail down here and this end up to a barrel swivel there you go very strong Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, John. I tied up one of those rigs after seeing him uh, in the initial video, and I gotta say, it came out much cleaner than the way I usually tie him, so give it a shot. From there though, switching back to striped bass, this time with a little bit of a freshwater twist on it. Heard from Fisherman Magazine subscriber Dave Bocas this week. He was fishing way up the Connecticut River. As a matter of fact, so far up, he was back in the, my old stomping grounds of Western Massachusetts where he landed a good sized striper this week. The fish weighed 26 pounds, gave him a big kick before he let it go. Congrats on the awesome spring fish. Sticking with the freshwater reports to finish things off this week, I just wanna pass along a quick little news story posted right now at thefisherman.com. It's about the annual spring stocking of catfish in Connecticut, which was just recently completed. This stocking this year put in more than 10,000 adult channel catfish. Rather than the smaller fingerlings and so on that they usually stock, this year all the fish were between 14 and 18 inches stocked into 19 water bodies located throughout Connecticut. They did this to put quality fish 
in the lakes right away rather than having to wait and let them grow up a little bigger. So there's already some great catch, <coughs> great eating quality sized catfish out there. And the majority of the locations stocked this year were part of the DEP's Community Fishing Water Programs, which are spots located in municipal parks and close proximity to hundreds of thousands of Connecticut residents. Now, many of these waters are located along bus stops and angling, enabling anglers to either without a vehicle or not old enough to drive yet to ride the bus to fish. So it's a really cool program. Big thanks to the guys in Connecticut. Be sure to take a look at the story at thefisherman.com right now for a complete list of all the lakes that received some fish. Whew, all right, that was a lot to get through, but as always, if you plan to head out and fish this weekend, be sure to start off your trip by visiting thefisherman.com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evan Rood Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.